Yeah, Smart War Games here. Let's check out Patton Strikes Back. The Battle of the Bulge. A 90s era war game. Operation Scale. And yeah, the name indicates what is going on. We are at the Battle of the Bulge, yeah, late Eastern uh, Western Front. And the German offensive is about to fail, uh, to fail or already failed. And Patton is now put in a charge to counter attack. Yeah, from a circle standpoint, it uh, holds a record. I think the forces below Patton managed in one of the fastest mechanized armored pushes in history in a yeah, specific time frame and yeah that is exactly what we will do yeah full aggressiveness yeah we will start with journalist mode and play of course as americans Game is resolving around a uh, operational map, which will be shown here. Uh, units are presented as icons, which indicate their stance. Seems like Germans are still on a push. Yeah, buttons or whatever stuff is handled by hotkeys, which are also printed on the screen. Uh, F1 is um, the usual stuff, like saving game. Uh, show American zone of controls. Yes, represented rather in a strange way, but why not? Supply lines, that might be important. Let's check that. That is basically main roads supplying our force currently, indicated by blinking. Unsupplied units, that might be important. Yeah, but that is German force, I'm pretty sure they're not unsupplied. Nobody is unsupplied, at least of, our, of us. We have a lot of idle units, yeah, represented by a question mark, but I will definitely give orders to them. Landmarks, that would be nice. Okay. Swinging that will come with names. It's basically tied to victory points. You can also indicate strength. Also, represent this game works a lot with icons and symbology. Yeah, by the different icons, you can rate the strength. Having a manual might be a good idea. Yeah, you can also call for tactical advice and see what happens. War is not so difficult as people think, George Patton. From Jimmy smoking a cigar and drinking coffee. That is exactly perfect advice you need as a Supreme Commander. Yeah, news reels, etc. We will leave that on. Delegate airstrikes. Yeah, let's do that. The army wants you simple. Good. Yeah, history book. There is some sort of where you can read a bit. Uh, I think war games also. Good war games also mm, have the job of telling you about the history here. The King Tiger thing. Let's see what they tell us in the King Tiger thing. Adolf Hitler had a yen for weapons. <laughs> He was furious when he learned in 41 that the Russian T-34 could outfight any German tank. He demanded a tank more powerful than anything the Allies might build. Thus was born the Panzer VI or Tiger. The original Tiger looked for all the world like a bigger, heavier version of the Panzer IV. A 55 ton, it had over twice the weight of the Panzer IV. Exclamation mark. Forcing 100 millimeters, 4 inches of frontal armor. 
this thing was almost invulnerable. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, most King Tigers didn't fail because of enemy interaction, but because of mechanical or logistic breakdowns. Gun was mighty 8-8. Yeah, that showed in the experience of the Eastern Front that the 8-8 caliber used by initially used by anti-aircraft flak uh, units then desperately used against Soviet tanks pro proved to be quite effective and so they designed a tank can out of it. Yeah, it is stated here, anti-aircraft gun, deadly against tanks. This tank, the Tiger 1, made its debut, debut 42. Yeah, 42, yeah, perhaps in Africa. I think the first appearance of the, of the normal Tiger was in Africa. Eastern Front, there was some experimental deployments, but true fielding happened with Kursk. Very improved model, the Tiger 2. Yeah, I won't call it that. The Tiger 2 was not really a great improved Tiger. Yeah, it was a super heavy tank, considered back then. And yeah, the Tiger was built as a breakthrough tank. Initially, design study already started I think before World War II or was on the on the on the verge of World War II, on the edge of World War II. It was usually designed as a yeah infantry support tank. That's also why it is fielding uh, armor thickness to all aspects. Because those things were designed to drive through enemy lines while being like couldn't be harmed by regular anti-tank weaponry but later those tanks then became of course very important for anti-tank warfare but they were not initially designed for that and the king tiger was simply don't think there's that much ties of king tiger to a tiger simply a super heavy tank definitely not what the nazi germany needed back then with the fuels and material sort shortages, blew up. A King Tiger was really not the tank that. This, of course, we all loved those big tanks, but King Tiger didn't do that much. Yeah. If you compare it, really, if you dig into history, it was really tanks like the Stuck. Yeah, cheap. No turret tanks, yeah, tank destroyers that then re. Really did the difference, that's also why they wanted to design the Hetzer, which was basically a streamlined, cheap Stuck with a powerful gun in masses, but they never managed it, luckily got defeated before those tanks could be fielded in masses. Yeah, but what is true that the King Tiger incorporates some design Philosophies of the Panther, which derives from the also from experience with the T-34 designs, yeah, with sloped armor. Also, sometimes historians claim that the Germans didn't know about sloped armor. Sloped armor was known since the ancients. Yeah. Even in the ancients, people bashed each other's heads, knew about the effect of sloped armor. That or, yeah, sloped defense that this physically defies incoming energy. Uh, they already knew it in the, in the ancients. Uh, it was not some new technology discovered by the Soviets. Sloped armor was well known. The problem was of sloped armor, its design or its production requirements. Design Tanks with sloped armor, of course, comes with some downsides, which comes to production, might complicate production, and especially also might reduce uh, combat compartment size. If you slope, a, for example, a turret, heavily slope a turret, yeah, which happened, for example, for the T-34, for the early T-34. If you compare the early T-34 to the T-34-85, 
will, you will notice that the slope was even somewhat reduced. Why? Not because they was thinking they were thinking that slope is not good, but they realized that they need fighting compartment, um, especially for additional crew role. As the early T-34s were operating with gunner and commander in one person, and they realized that this is not really a good idea. That's for example why the T-34. Yeah, I mean, that is of course a matter, matter of opinion, but the early T-34 on the Eastern Front was not really a, a good tank. They suffered some hardships. Yeah? Sure, Germans encountered them and had problems, but a lot of T-34s were simply outmaneuvered or defeated by good command control, offered by additional commander, offered by additional radio. Nevertheless, yeah, the T-34-85, yeah, that's an upgraded T-34 with an additional commander. That was a pretty good medium tank. I uh, could even say that this was one of the best World War II tanks. If you compare co production costs to outcome, Germans were proceeded to build quite complicated tanks. Uh, those tanks are, of course, nice to look at. And I also love the King Tiger, but it was really what they needed back then when they already f faced defeat. But nevertheless, yeah, it's nice to have here this um, wiki pages. Let's see what they have as here. That's quite interesting. Personalities. Let's see what they state on Patton. Uh, Patton often here being held as a holy Jimmy. Yeah, it is true, especially for the Germans, they feared Patton most. Which doesn't mean that the other allied generals were bad or whatever, but. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I like this. We a lot of information put in the game. If you want to learn about these commanders or whatever, let's see what they have first here. The units. Luftwaffe, let's see what they have here to tell the Luftwaffe. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but I can tell you about the Luftwaffe. At 44, they struggled hard. Yeah. They, the branch of Luftwaffe or German Air Force was reduced quite heavy. That's also why the Luftwaffe started to field, field divisions. Be it in Italy, yeah, by this very popular division. Because they simply lacked aircraft and lacked flying personnel to crew the initial OBs. And politically, there's always, for every nation, of course, some sort of a fight going on between the branches. They start to field, field divisions. Basically, Luftwaffe trained personnel for ground combat. Let's see what you have to tell about psychology. What makes men fight? Jimmy. What 
Emperor Karl, everybody is fighting. It's all asking questions. I think there's one saying in war, yeah, war brings out the best or the worst of man. That is quite true. Yeah, you, some, some cleric can turn to a mass murderer while some uneventful baker can turn out to be the hero of the day. But yeah, I like that you have a lot of information here. Even here, psychology being de depicted. Let's see what they have as here. Weapons. Grenades. Let's see what they tell about grenades, because there's a lot of misconceptions about grenades. The hand grenade. Small explosive that will blow up stuff. Yeah, I think there is quite good research. What you see sometimes in movies and what the reality is, are grenades. That is, grenades are rather random, yeah. Especially a fragmentation grenade, a fragmentation hand grenade. There's also, especially I think the allied grenade was rather based on fragmentation, which you see here on the outer layer. That is basically fragments that will then accelerate by the explosion and try to hit stuff. And there's a chance that this grenade explodes a meter away from some chimney. This chimney will be unharmed by some guy at, at least in my service time, he didn't use grenade. Yeah, in training you don't use the fragmentation. It depends, yeah, nowadays it might be different, but uh, you can also detonate a grenade without the fragmentation layer. But those um, secure distances were rather interesting. They were quite high, uh, because by random some guy might get hit by a shrapnel. Which probably happened also. Uh, the German grenade, the Stielhand granate, yeah, you had to screw off the this cap here, then you had to pull a, a cord. Also a misconception of gra about grenades is yeah, pre-cooking. Uh, pre-cooking didn't happen that much, pre-cooking was even disallowed, it was denied. I, of course, probably some people did it. Uh, pre-cooking is basically you remove the safety ring. Uh, for that you need to press the grenade, then you remove the safety ring and the grenade is still not cooked, the grenade is safe, yeah, but you need to maintain some pressure. I've seen it in training regimes that people rather remained pussy pressure and because they were re especially in grenade training a lot of people are quite nervous. They use strain grenades, but those, but those strain grenades still boom. Yeah? They don't have the fragmentation layer, but if you would detonate it in the hand, your hand would be a goner. Uh, but still, a lot of people are quite nervous when they detonate those grenades, because everybody's watching, then you have the instructor with you, and you're sitting in the bunker in this uh, foxhole there. You remove the safety ring, but this here, that is triggering a grenade. If you release the safety handle, the grenade is getting cooked, yeah? and there's, of course, this pre-cooking that you let this thing spring off, there's quite a pressure on it, yeah, you will also hear it popping off, yeah, it will make pop if that thing is going away. And then you could throw the grenade with less time to detonation. Never heard of this really historically being done. Pretty sure some Jimmy's did that. But it was rather da dangerous, yeah, because a lot of those Grenades operate on a chemical fuse, and this chemical fuse doesn't have a specific time point. Yeah, if it detonates in 3 seconds, or if it detonates in 5 seconds, nobody can tell. There might be an average. Yeah, for the steel hunt, uh, I think Amer Anglo-Americans call it potato masher. 
you pulled you pulled the cord and then you realize this thing is cooked and then you threw it same for those things yeah um, but you need to watch out yeah? i also seen people that lose the grenades when especially that, that is often happening they have rather a very weak grip and then this thing is popping off and then they screw it up and the grenade is dropping then the instructor is picking up the grenade throwing it away by throwing noob jimmy into the foxhole happens yeah but usually we hear some sort of a pop here yeah? when that thing go goes off then the grenade is armed and at least i don't know what they did in world war ii yeah world war ii were of course quite dark times I can imagine that some people did some stuff like this, but in modern military pre-cooking grenades, that was really uh, that if you would do something like this, I mean, in war times, of course, different. Nobody will evaluate your performance. I won't do it, yeah. But I mean, one second you can wait, Jimmy. One second is sh is safe. One or two seconds, or three seconds, or ten seconds, twenty seconds. <laughs> yeah, perhaps pre-cooking. That is pre-cooking. Yeah, we release this safety handle, and then the grenade is cooked after removing the ring. That's also why you don't carry. Yeah, you see sometimes those war movies. In those World War II or whatever war movies, people carrying the grenade on a ring. Uh, that was at least something they told us, Jimmy, that is absolute death sentence. But it seems like it happened. Uh, some people carried it on their BDU by attaching those grenades on a ring. As I mentioned, yeah, that ring is not easily removed. You usually need to apply pressure before you can remove the ring. And then you basically have immediately a uh, ready grenade by removing it from your BDU or your vest by pressing it together. But I heard some of those early grenades didn't have this or were even more prone. I heard or they told us stories in Vietnam where people blow themselves up by walking through the jungle and by accident cooking grenades on their vests by yeah where the grenade was basically cooked by accident by foliage. That is of course not a nice way to go off the world, right? And you will sometimes be surprised what people survive with grenades. Yeah, from Afghanistan I know stories where people basically threw a rucksack a backpack onto the grenade and survived. Uh, they were of course blown away a couple of meters, but they survived with little injuries. Those grenades, if you can contain them, it's not like in those movies that a big flash is happening. The death dealing force is often the shrapnel. The explosion itself, together with the shockwave, can of course stun you. But it has still the capability by random kill people out of several decades of uh, several tens of meters by bad luck. Good. So let's go re aggressive here. Utonis will remain here, Utonis will push into this enemy force here. No, oh no, stay with this facing. But you will attack those Tonis together with the 9th armored CCB. And let's go full aggressive here. 
Yeah, but I, I, I need to admit I was also rather nervous on my first grenade throw. <laughs> but I managed. Yeah, nobody was blew up. But you of course get those stories told that there was some noob that dropped a grenade into the foxhole. And the instructor picked it up and threw it away. Again, those train grenades, they are quite harmful. They do it on purpose. It would be some unicorn grenades. Not sure if they still do it nowadays. In modern world of being offended by everything, perhaps they changed their approach. But back in the days, there was little, especially for future leaders. Those guys were usually picked first. Yeah, uh, you want to become a, a future officer, right? Uh, officers train together, in a, at least here. But some training you might receive afterwards, after your basic training, and officer aspirants were usually picked first. Yeah, in order to. Usually, because you're usually trained by NCOs or by analysts, and they like to pick officers first or future officers. This is a sentence of "You want to become an officer, so you should be able to handle that." That's the first Jimmy. Good, we ended here some orders. We are ready to start the game. There was a button I would have said. Ah, start game. So it is rather a fast paced operation game, yeah, it is rather simple. It's going around a Vigo system with some video interaction. Uh, it seems like some Germans broke through here. Oh, they got isolated. You take it optimistic. Okay, yeah, in the south we're pushing some Germans back. But well, here the veterans of the 3rd Infantry, General Lieutenant Kurt Mü Karl Müller, uh, pushing across the bridge. Yeah, that's how the game works. Yeah, it's very well, sim simple. Fast paced operation game. And it seems like in the north it also looks very really good. Yeah, we're pushing back some German force by isolating other ones. Here in the center there's some major fight developing at the bridge. We, we might set this unit to defense. Yeah, in the south, our retreat might be in place, at least behind the river. We are surrounded there. And here in the center, that is also rather looking grim. As here, the Germans manage some successes, tactical successes. By the north, yeah, is absolutely pushing back the forces. Those Germans already going on defense mode in the north, or on retreat mode. Yeah, that's basically how the game works. Yeah, that is fast-paced. 
let's see some some video information what is happening So don't go full aggressive like I did at the beginning. You know, see, there's still a German. You know, still have quite an offensive capability here. Even destroy their unit, it seems. And here in the south, we find a unit isolated. That is quite dangerous. As supply will be now traced and calculated, and this unit in itself definitely won't receive supplies. <clears throat> so moving across the river was quite optimistic. But you get the basic idea of the game. Yeah, that's really interesting, you will receive some sort of historical accounts. In a dynamic fashion, depending on what happens on the game. And then can learn about the Battle of the Bulge and the involved tactics and equipment. So there's a nice education factor yeah, here in the south. Full encirclement. That is of course something you don't want to have happen. So in the beginning, rather stay somewhat defensive, as you see by the map, uh, there's the eastern edge, so you are supposed to fight for the western as well, and you're not supposed to send German units off in the first turn, if that would be that easy, they would have designed a different map. Yeah, and this encircled unit is having quite a heavy brunt. I'm not sure if they will make it to the next turn. And it looks not good for the 4th Infantry, those Jimmy's simply disappeared, yeah, and as a fog of war is setting in on the south, as we have no intelligence anymore on the southern composition of enemy forces. So rather played in the beginning more defensive, so what I said that this is already Battle of the Bulges failed, and your counter attacking is not entirely true, you see the Germans are still pushing hard here, so you still might be on defense duty until further reinforcements arrive. And you should focus on attrition those enemy forces at good defense positions in the beginning. Attacking full hardy into them right at the beginning is a rather dangerous affair. Okay, let's pause the game. Yeah, I would now update my orders and retreat. I mean, in the north we definitely managed some screw up of German forces. Uh, reinforcements arriving here, first infantry incoming. North one looks pretty good. We screwed up the entire offensive here. But still, yeah, 99th infantry being endangered of encirclement. Second infantry should come immediately to help. You can also drag and drop like this. It's nice. Those guys should retreat. Those guys also should retreat behind the river, form up a new defense position. 
And yeah, in the south we basically lost all of our capability because of too much aggressiveness. Yeah, it is a fast-paced operation, a real-time game basically. Mm, offering a unique gameplay experience, so check it out if you like what you see. And with shift you can also here, at least you know, I'll show you quickly with shift you can activate the strength levels represented by symbology. Uh, you see the size of the flag is getting smaller or bigger. Give you a, big, a quick idea of how strong are certain forces. And yeah, I will be back with something else in a couple of minutes. See you. Good hunting.